a rhino fossil has rewritten the earliest human history of migration. An archaeological dig in Luzon, an island in the northern Philippines, has uncovered fossils of an Ice Age rhinoceros that was butchered around 700,000 years ago. It's the first evidence demonstrating the presence of archaic humans in the Philippines. This exciting new finding suggests that early hominins were more widespread than previously thought in region known as Wallacea, the vast network of islands located east of continental Eurasia. Archaeologists discovered the now extinct rhino carcass during excavations in Luzon's Cagayan Valley. Marks on the bones indicate slicing with sharp-edged stone tools showing that hominins removed flesh and fat from this large animal which they either killed or found recently deceased. Simple stone tools were found near the rhino. The rhino and tools were buried in river sediments. The team proposed an age of between 777,000 to 631,000 years ago for their discovery. Scientists are confident in these results because they used several independent dating methods that are all in agreement. But what species of humans, exactly, butchered the rhino? In archaeological science, the term archaic hominin is generally used to refer to extinct forms of humans. Prior research shows that archaic hominins had reached the islands of Sulawesi and Flores, to the south of Luzon by at least 200,000 years ago, and 1 million years ago respectively. Like Luzon, Sulawesi and Flores are large Wallacean islands, located relatively close to the edge of the southeastern tip of continental Asia, an area known as Sunderland. Given that archaic hominins were able to colonize Sulawesi and Flores, it stands to reason that they also could have made it to the Philippines. But until now, conclusive evidence for this has been lacking. At this stage researchers don't know which human species the early toolmakers in Luzon belong to, due to the lack of hominin fossils from the rhino site. However, the most likely candidate is Homo erectus, a widespread species that inhabited Java from 1.2 million years ago, and was also in China. This group would also include the hobbit, Homo floresiensis, which may be a dwarfed Homo erectus. That said, it is now clear that Wallacea is a highly enigmatic region, with a complex role in the human evolutionary story, so I would not rule out the possibility that an entirely unknown human species, or subspecies, inhabited Luzon Island. But how did ancient humans even get to Luzon Island? The team concluded that hominins of some kind had established a presence in the northern Philippines during the Middle Pleistocene epoch, between 781,000 and 126,000 years ago. And that they must have come originally from Borneo, to the southwest, or Taiwan to the north, and that they could potentially have used boats. Most mainstream scientists will be reluctant to accept the idea of archaic hominins paddling beyond Eurasia, in purpose-built watercraft, even very rudimentary boats. This is not to say that such a scenario is impossible, but if it were, then there would be evidence that archaic hominins got to more remote parts of the region, including Australia. Researchers think it is more likely that rare events are the mechanism behind hominin populations taking root on oceanic islands near Asia. For example, archaic hominins may have been swept out to sea by tsunamis, and survived ocean crossings by clinging to floating vegetation. This seems rather dubious, considering there is evidence of archaic humans on Mediterranean islands as well. The oldest stone tools on Flores date back at least 1 million years. The earliest hominin fossils from this island are 700,000 years old, and belong to a hobbit-like population that may be directly ancestral to Homo floresiensis. The Luzon find is important to the Hobbit story because it now looks like the northern part of Wallacea was the source for the hominin population that first reached Flores, via Sulawesi, on the southern fringes of Wallacea. The Flores fossils suggest that hominins were cut off on this island, survived for hundreds of millennia, and underwent remarkable evolutionary changes, including shrinking dramatically, in both body and brain size. It is possible a similar story 
of hominins evolving in genetic isolation took place in Luzon. But, the Luzon environments are distinct from those of Flores, so researchers can't easily predict the outcome of a new evolutionary experiment, with different parameters in this remote island. But there may be some real surprises in store, when a hominin fossil is unearthed in Luzon. Finally, the biggest of big picture questions, is whether archaic hominins in Flores and Luzon, and Sulawesi, persisted for long enough to come face to face with modern humans, who probably migrated into this area around 70,000 years ago. We now know from ancient DNA studies, that our species interbred with at least two, but probably more, archaic hominin species, that were encountered by modern humans outside Africa. These were the Neanderthals of Europe and Denisovans of Asia. Could there have been other gene flow events, involving unique populations of archaic humans scattered throughout Wallacea? We don't yet know the answer to that question. Another collection of stone tools dating back more than 50,000 years has been unearthed on the Indonesian island of Sulawesi. But scientists uncovered no human fossils, so the identity of these toolmakers remains a mystery. Scientists reported the discovery of similar findings, dating to 200,000 years ago on Sulawesi, but they have no idea who made them either. The earliest Sulawesi tools are so old, that they could belong to one of several human species. Candidates include Homo erectus and Homo floresiensis, and Homo luzonensis. Alternatively, they might have been Denisovans, distant cousins of Neanderthals, who met early Aboriginal people in Southeast Asia, leaving a genetic legacy in their descendants. They may even have been Homo sapiens that had ventured out of Africa, long before the main exodus of our species. Or they could be a totally unknown species. Where did these ancient humans disappear to? Not only do researchers not know who the first inhabitants of Sulawesi were, they have no idea what happened to them. By 40,000 years ago, people were creating rock art on Sulawesi. Given the sophistication of these artworks, their makers were surely homo sapiens with modern minds, like ours. This large island, on the route to Australia, might have been the launch pad to these shores up to 65,000 years ago. It could even be where the first Australians met Denisovans. If the ancient islanders were a now extinct hominid group, did they live long enough to encounter modern cultures? Sulawesi holds great promise for understanding the initial peopling of our world, so stay tuned.